Hi friends, I'm Jess. Welcome to the Hex Library, where today we'll be discussing my wrap-up for the month of January. In the month of January, I read 12 books for a total of 4,557 pages, which was a lot. I read a lot. 12 books is good and I'm really happy with it and I've still been reading a lot in February so I'm definitely on the reading train. Let's talk about the books that I read. If you are new here I typically start with my lowest rated book and then move up into the highest rated book and in January I actually had three books that I did not rate so we'll talk about those three first. I did not have any DNFs or unhauls so we don't have to start there and that's a good thing. We're gonna first talk about Atomic Habits by James Clear. It was the first book I read of 2023. One thing I do want to mention is that for the past few years I have been reading a book on the like the first book I've read of the year has been a book that is a nonfiction that is geared towards something that is part of my goals for the year. So my goal for 2023 is to learn how to incorporate better habits into my daily life. So Atomic Habits seemed like the perfect thing to start the year off with. I did not rate this because I tend not to rate nonfiction um, just because it doesn't feel right to do. Um, because I think something like this that is based off of someone's experiences or opinions um, with some facts involved is it's just it's a weird thing to rate so I choose not to rate that. What I will say is I do think there's a lot of good information in Atomic Habits. I do think it was helpful. I do think this is a your mileage may vary so it depends on like how much research you've done into like habit structure. Um, if you've done a lot of research then this probably won't be as helpful for you but if you're looking for a starting point I think this is a good starting point. There were a lot of like little gold nuggets of information in there. I do think I want to purchase a physical copy of this to reference back to. I did listen to it on audio. It is read by the author. Um, but I do think I want a physical copy to just kind of reference back to. So um, I will be picking up a, a copy of this in the future. The next book that I did not rate was A Semi-Definitive List of Worst Nightmares by Crystal Sutherland. Um, I didn't rate it because it was a reread. It is my favorite book of all time. I originally rated it a 4.75 out of 5 stars. Um, this was my... I don't, I'm not sure if it was my sixth read overall or my sixth reread. So I've either read it six or seven times. I don't remember. Um, I typically read it every year. I read it twice in 2019, um, literally back to back. The first time I read it, it was so good. I listened to the audiobook and I immediately purchased the physical copy and then sat down and read the physical copy of the book because I loved it so much. Um, and I have reread it at least once every year since then. So I'm either at six or seven, not sure. Um, but it is one of my favorite books of all time, or possibly my favorite book of all time. You know, it fluctuates. But the book follows Esther and her brother Eugene, and they live in this family that is cursed. Uh, they believe their family to be cursed with things like bad luck, agoraphobia, um, different fears. You're always afraid of a fear. And they believe that their great fear will kill them. They believe that their grandfather met death when he was in the Vietnam War and death cursed them to die from their great fear. And Esther has tried to live her life not having a great fear. And she bumps into her old elementary school crush Jonah and he finds out what she's doing. And so they kind of decide to set out together to look into her fears and try to face them in order to bring death out so that they can get death to take the curse off of their family. It sounds very fun and it is fun but it's also very deep, very dark, has a lot of um, things that um, you know child abuse, neglect, um, again agoraphobia, fear of the dark, uh, attempted suicide, like there's a lot of things in the book. Uh, it is very dark but it also deals a lot with anxiety and depression which are things that I deal with and this was one of the first times that I really felt that being expressed in a book in the way that I enjoyed. I do always mention that at the beginning of like 25 to 30 percent of the book it does feel like the author is kind of making light of actual mental health issues and saying that like they're cursed because they have these mental health issues but as the book moves on it, it does become more apparent um, that that is the way that the character feels and not necessarily the author and the character does grow as time goes on. So if you're reading it and you're looking at it as like glorifying mental illness it does progress beyond that as the story goes on. Um, again I've read it like seven times so I, I clearly have all of the nuances in my brain but 
Uh, it's a fantastic read. Highly recommend. The other book that I didn't rate was Beyond the Wand by Tom Felton. Again, a nonfiction, a memoir of Tom Felton's life. Um, so I didn't rate it. A good chunk of this book was, if in case you were wondering, if he talks about the lady who shall not be named, he does talk about her in the book. And I think it is more from the perspective of a kid who is really grateful to have had the experiences that he's had in life due to a thing that she created. I don't think he like puts her on this pedestal of she's perfect. I don't think he agrees with things that she said. I don't think that um, if you're reading it, knowing that she's an absolute trash human being, which she is, I don't think that it will affect you um, negatively. Now, he also doesn't come out and, um, you know, mention anything that she said recently and say, you know, like, I definitely don't agree with that. I think the book is about him and it's not about her. And while he does mention her, I think it is just, it's a couple of times and it's really just from a, the standpoint of like, this woman made this great thing that gave me so many opportunities in my life and I'm thankful for that. So that is there. Um, he does talk a lot about his experiences on the set, which were really fun to read because as someone who grew up with the books and then um, later in life, you know, got to watch the movies, it was fun to kind of get behind the scenes of that. For me, what was fantastic, not fantastic, but a fantastic read was the latter half of the book where he was talking about his addiction issues with alcohol um, and becoming an alcoholic and how that affected his life and how he kind of became that because of the journey that he was on and the way that uh, fame really impacted his life and how overcoming his alcoholism really changed who he was as a person and the things that it has made him see like retroactively or retrospectively however you want to say um later on yes so i really enjoyed that aspect of it i do recommend it the audiobook is great tom reads it himself listening to him chuckle about things that are funny while he's reading the things is is highly entertaining and I definitely enjoyed it. So the first book that I rated and the lowest rated book was 2.75 out of 5 stars and that was Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead by Olga. I believe it's Tokarsik. She's Polish. I'm not sure. I again gave this a 2.75 out of 5 stars. It was the pick for our local bookstores book club. It was a ride. Um, it was it was fine. It was a bit long, a bit dry. Um, the first quarter and the last quarter were really good, but the middle was just kind of, mm. it says it's a mystery thriller and I think it's definitely not a thriller. It does have, or no, it says it's a murder mystery. It says it's a murder mystery. And I don't know that it's that either. Um, it read more like just basic fiction. There were some murders. There was a little bit of a mystery, but it wasn't really what you would expect from that genre. The end of the book was really good. I do think that the characters really, um, could have been fleshed out more, but I think the setting is what really sold this book for me. Um, it's set in the mountains in the cold and you really feel that isolation and that coldness throughout the book. It was fine. Uh, it did make for a great book club discussion though, so it was worth it. Also at a 2.75 is A Day Without Dawn by Jillian Eaton. This book came out in 2016. I pre-ordered this in 2016. It is the second book in the Lola Chronicles. Um, I loved the first book and so I pre-ordered this and then have not picked it up in six years. So would I have enjoyed this more if I had read it closer to the other book? Possibly. One thing I will say about these is that they are self-published by Jillian who writes predominantly um, anymore. She writes historical romances which are usually really good. I have enjoyed those over the years. She I think there was supposed to be more books after this but then she chose to just go and to stick with historical romances and not write any YA anymore which is fine. You're allowed to make those decisions. I do think this book could have used a little bit more editing. There definitely was a part where um, our main character Lola tells a group of people a thing about herself and then like four or five pages later she says it again and they all act surprised like they'd never heard it before. Um, so that was just kind of like a weird, like takes you out of the moment of the story. And then you're like going back to be like, didn't she just tell them that? And then, so you get taken out and it's a little weird, but this is definitely a case of things being over far too easily, far too soon at the end of the book. But I do like this world that she set up. Uh, it's about vampires. It's about a world, um, where Lola, you know, is like having her normal teenage life. And then one day, the vampires come in, they get rid of every route out of town and in one night basically slaughter the entire town. Um, and Lola is one of the few survivors and then this, both books kind of figure, follow them like figuring out 
and how they're gonna make it out of the town. Um, so it's kind of like 30 Days a Night, but less bloody. We then have two three stars to talk about, and they are Burn for Burn and Fire with Fire by Jenny Han and Siobhan Vivian. This is a trilogy. I only read two books in January, uh, but it is a trilogy following three girls who meet on the first day of school. Um, they kind of know each other, but haven't like really been in the same friend circles in a long time. Uh, Mary, who is new to the school, so no one really knows her, but the other two girls, Lilia and Kat, have known each other and were friends in the past in like middle school, but now they're senior year of high school. They're not friends, they run in different packs. And the three of them all want revenge for people who have done bad things to them. And so the girls kind of form this pack where they're going to help each other get the revenge that they want to get on their friends um, or their frenemies, if you will. Uh, these are these are fine like they're not if I was I think the first book came out in like 2014 and had I read this as a teenager or in 2014 when I was still reading a lot of YA I probably would have enjoyed them more but they are they're absolutely fine there's nothing wrong with them there is that's a lie there is some weird fat shaming fat phobia kind of stuff going on especially with Mary um, because her character was overweight is in middle school and so a lot of her torment deals with her having been overweight in middle school and then her not being overweight now and so like there's some weird things about like how she eats and or how she doesn't eat there's some questionable things about that but otherwise there's not anything that's like glaringly like oh my god these are horrible um it's just regular teenage drama there is a weird paranormal twist in these that you really don't get into you see it in the first book but it doesn't really get into the nitty-gritty of it until the second book and it is a fantastic twist and I think that is what really kept me reading this series um but they are they're fine like if you like YA if you like um teenage drama with backstabbing and all of the drama then you will probably like these we then have the book of cold cases by simone st james i gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars this book follows shay who is a she's kind of like a crime blogger she has a website where she talks about cold cases it's actually called the book of cold cases um where her and other people like online try to figure out these cold cases and things that are going on shay was actually a victim of a crime when she was a child um there was like a serial killer that was killing kids and she's one of the few that actually got away from the serial killer so throughout the whole book you're like learning about that happened but she's studying a crime that happened in 1977 um, where the town that they live in was taken by what they're calling the lady killer murders. There was a woman who was accused of shooting two men randomly, was tried but acquitted, and Shay is wanting to do research into the story and kind of figure out what actually happened back in the day and if this woman is actually a killer. So this story was very kooky and very weird. There is a lot of paranormal aspect to this and a lot of it doesn't make sense. And the end is a problem because it had an end, but then it had like 16 epilogues. Like you get to the end of the story, but then there's like a two months later and then a three months later and then a six months later and then a two years later. And then there's like a forever after. And it is weird that that was the choice that they made. Like, I understand the concept of wanting to tell us what's happening in the future. Like, I get that aspect, but it was done in a weird way. And the paranormal part was never really fully explained. But I do think if you like mystery fillers, if you haven't read a lot of them, I think this is a fine book to go into. Again, it's 3.5. It's not a bad rating. I did enjoy it. I had a good time reading it. I'm just confused about a little bit of it. Um, but our main character, Shay, I really enjoyed her. I liked learning about her life and her history and her past and that aspect of it was fine. Just confused about the paranormal parts. We then have Love in the Time of Serial Killers by Alicia Thompson, which I gave a 3.75 out of 5 stars and that was an arc that I read. This book follows our main character and I wish I could tell you her name but I don't know it, but the internet will tell me. Her name's Phoebe. Okay, uh, this book follows Phoebe who is moving into her father's old home. Her father passed away. She's going to live there for a while while her and her brother clean out her dad's house because her dad was a hoarder. Um, her and her dad were not on good, not on a good relationship. Her parents got divorced when she was young. Her brother decided to stay with her dad. She left with her mom. And so she never really had a great relationship with her dad. There's also some drama in their past as well. Phoebe is addicted to true crime and she 
kind of has a weird way to look at everybody that she meets in her life. And the very first day she gets to her dad's house, there's a guy outside that she thinks she's like, I think this guy might be a serial killer. He turns out to be her neighbor, but she's still not convinced that he's not a serial killer. And as the book goes on, you really are like getting, there's not a whole lot of time where you're con she's convinced this guy's a serial killer, but it's just enough to be interesting. This is a true rom-com. There are a lot of people who have read this book and said that they really didn't like Phoebe and I relate to Phoebe so hard. Like there were actual parts of this book where I was in tears over like the angsty parts of her romance as a, I think she's 30 in the book. Um, I'm 36, so I'm a little bit older than her, um, but definitely angsty when it comes to romance. So there were definitely some parts that really hit hard with me and I definitely felt like in my soul that made me cry. So um, I do think the other characters could have been fleshed out more. There were definitely space for other characters to be more present in the book. Um, I'll read this part to you from my review because it's it tells you more than what I can say. At the core, this is a story about a 30 year old woman figuring out that she doesn't have to be cynical and non-trusting of people all the time. She figures out life and learns how to come to grips with the trauma from her past, the person that turned her into, and the person she hopes she can be in the future. I do think this was very much a rom-com, but it had like, it was a little spicy. It was angsty. It made me a little depressed if I'm being honest. Um, the third act, like, you know, the darkest moment where the couple comes apart and like nothing's ever going to be the same again, really hurt. Like it actually hurt me. Like I felt physical pain. So, I mean, it was, it was a good, good rom-com. Um, it could have been better, but was still a, a good time. So the next book is What Lies in the Woods by Kate Alice Marshall. If you know, I'm a Kate Alice Marshall stan girl. So obviously I had to read this. This book, unlike her YA and mid-grade, is not paranormal in any way. It is a murder mystery thriller. It follows Naomi who I think 20 years prior she and two of her friends were in the woods and they were attacked by this killer and they tell their story and this guy is arrested and sent to jail and 20 years later one of the girls is like I want to talk about what actually happened that day and I want to tell the police what really happened that day. And so the story is us figuring out what actually happened that day. Uh, it was a fantastic time. There were a lot of plot twists in this. There's one that I guessed early on, but not because I thought it was obvious, but because I was like, you know what would make this so cool? And then it happened and it was so cool. There are so many moments where you think you know what's going on or you think you know what happened all those years ago in the woods and then something like a shoe drops and you're like, oh, that can't be what happened. So then you have to like reformulate what happened in your mind and then you're like, okay, I think I got it. And then something else happens. And you're like, okay, that wasn't it either. And I honestly did not guess it until the end. Like I had a fantastic time trying to figure this out. This book really is about like the dark twisty secrets that a small town is willing to hide. And it's done so well. I think in the past reading Kate Alice Marshall, like you can think that maybe her storytelling is done so well because of how well she's able to get the paranormal creep factor in. But she didn't use any of that here and she made a damn fine book. So uh, very excited. Highly recommend this to literally everyone. Before we get to my highest rated book of the month, I do want to take a minute to mention that I did also read Daughter of the Moon Goddess by Sue Lin Tan this month. But as it is a HarperCollins title and HarperCollins is still under strike, I will not be reviewing that until the strike is over. So um, I just want to mention that before we get to the end and we'll talk about the best book now. Um, my favorite book that I read in the month of January was Elantris by Brandon Sanderson. I did not expect to like this as much as I did if I'm being completely honest. I previously read Steelheart which is the first book in his Reckoners trilogy which is a YA superhero supervillain kind of story. So this was my first book in the Cosmere and I had a fantastic time. I loved the world building, I loved the characters, I loved all of it obviously. I gave it five stars. I have challenged myself to read a Sanderson every month this year and I picked a reading order. I chose a reading order. I chose a reading order um, of how I want to go through the books. I'm going to be doing the books and the novellas and short stories. So in February I actually am just reading The Hope of Elantris which is like a 25 page short story but I'm going to be reading a book every month until I get into like Stormlight Archives where it'll obviously take me more than a month to read a book but um so I was able to get Elantris done in a month. It was fantastic. I had a good time. I listened to the audiobook of the 10th anniversary edition and Sanderson talks about his writing experience with Elantris and how that was so much different than everything else that he wrote. Like typically he is a major outliner. 
who outlines everything and like all of the little plot details and typically only has to draft once maybe twice to really get a story down and I think he said he made like a dozen drafts of Elantris before he felt like he got it right and you can definitely tell like it is done so well the way everything's put together the world building the government systems the different cultures and everything is just done so fantastically I could literally scream about this forever what I will tell you is like every other book that we talked about for this month it will be linked in the description box down below where you can read my full review on goodreads it's multiple paragraphs of me just screaming about this book um and how fantastic it was so if you want to know more of my full thoughts you can check it out there i don't want to keep you here forever because i'm probably the last person on the planet to have read elantra so you've probably all already read it anyway um but if you haven't and you want to hear me rant about it rave about it yeah rave about it then you can go there and check it out okay if you made it this far in the video please leave your favorite emoji in the comment section down below that way i know that you were here and that you had a good time that is all i have for today i post reading writing book and planner related content a couple of times a week if you don't want to miss anything i have going on in the future make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below and until then i will see you guys next time bye